So about a year ago, someone named Picaspri made a video called Can You Beat Pokemon Red Slash Blue with Only a Ditto? This was by far one of the hardest challenges I have seen anyone ever attempt on a Pokemon game. I've done many hard challenges before, but this one definitely takes the cake. Today we find out, can you beat Pokemon Fire Red Slash Leaf Green with Only a Ditto? Taking a look at Ditto's stats, they're all set at a mediocre 48. Obviously not the best but they could be worse. Although Ditto's stats isn't the thing that's going to be holding us back in this run. Ditto's entire gimmick is that he can only learn the move Transform. Transform turns Ditto into the opposing Pokemon. This includes all the stats and moves, but we only have 5 PP of each move, which is definitely going to be causing us an issue. Let's go over the rules for this run. Rule number one is no using other Pokemon in battle besides Ditto, obviously. Rule number two is no using items in battle. For this run, held items are going to be allowed, because without held items, you just really can't it far at all. And last, no hacking or cheating of any kind. Finally, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get right into the run. For this run, I try to name our rival Picaspri. Unfortunately, we don't have enough spaces for it, so it just ends up being Picaspri. We then try and go to the grass, but of course Professor Oak stops us and takes us to get our first Pokemon. Using the Universal Pokemon Randomizer, we replace Bulbasaur for Ditto. That leaves our rival to take Charmander, which is definitely going to be an issue throughout this run. We then get to name our Ditto, and we name it Same because ditto. We end up losing this rival battle because we did have to use Transform to turn into his Charmander. We end up losing, but of course this battle isn't necessary to win. For this entire run, leveling up is definitely going to be brutal. Even if we're level 100 when we use Transform, everything except our HP turns into the opposing Pokemon stats. That means for grinding, it's going to be very difficult unless we go with a struggle strategy, running ourselves out of Transform PP on purpose. Throughout the run, I'll be grinding a lot off camera, and that's why this run took about 3 weeks to do. After an hour of grinding, we finally get to level 13. There's only one required trainer in Viridian Forest, and this is it. He uses a level 9 Weedle, and we are level 13 with a slight HP advantage. We end up having to run ourselves out of PP so we can get access to Struggle. We run out of Poison Sting PP, and then we run ourselves out of String Shot PP. Eventually, we do end up struggling his Weedle to death, and we win this battle. Next up is Brock. And I know at level 13, I stand absolutely no chance. So more crucial grinding is gonna have to happen. Eventually, we grind up all the way to level 19. Brock's Geodude's moveset isn't very good, so we go ahead and run ourselves out of Transform PP so we could use Struggle. After struggling our way past Geodude, next up is Onyx. Onyx does end up doing some good damage to us, but luckily we get the Struggle crit, and also he misses his tackle. We finish him off with one final struggle, and just like that, we get the Boulder Badge from Brock. Next up is Mount Moon. The only notable battle on Mount Moon is the one with the Super Nerd who's guarding both fossils. This was a pretty close battle because we did get poisoned by his coughing, but we end up getting the victory, taking out his Voltor with only a couple struggles. Next up is your guys' favorite part. Normally here, I would make an MDB joke, but I'm not allowed apparently. So whatever you guys do, do not ask me down in the comments below what fossil I took. Next up is our rival who accidentally makes the best joke I've ever seen because we're struggling. <laughs> we end up grinding all the way up to level 28. This is actually necessary in order to win because Charmander would always cause us a huge issue here. But eventually we do get through. We then go to Bill's house, saving him from his own stupid experiment and get the SS ticket. Next up is Misty. We are all the way at level 39 now. After multiple attempts, I decide going for Transform is far better than going for Struggle. Misty Staryu has Recover, which of course is a great move since we can't use any items in battle. Misty kept healing up Staryu, which made it a real pain to take out. After almost taking out Staryu with Tackles, we end up getting confused by Water Pulse, so that was not fun at all. Luckily for us though, we don't get confused, we don't hit ourselves, we use Recover and take Star U out with one Water Pulse. Next up is Star Me, the evolved form of Star U, which is only stronger. We do have four Recovers left, so I know this is definitely possible. If we would have hit ourselves in confusion there, the battle wouldn't have been over, but luckily for us, we do get off a couple of Recovers. Eventually, we end up running out of attacking moves. This is awful for us, and that means we have to waste all of our PP just so we could use Struggle. Luckily for us, we do get off a couple of Recovers, do not hit ourselves in confusion once again, and we're finally able to take out Starmie using Struggle. We just beat the second gym, and we're already at level 39. I have no idea at this point if this run is even possible. Let's trudge on and go to the SSN. On the SSN, our rival's here, and of course it's gonna cause us a huge issue. For this battle, we don't go for struggle strategies. We end up using Pidgeotto. Pidgeotto's not a terrible Pokemon, so we're gonna go ahead and try with this. Our rival has four Pokemon, Pidgeotto, Abra, Raticate and his Charmeleon. We do have a huge level advantage, but once again, it really doesn't matter. Besides the extra health, 
We have the same stats as the level 19 Pidgeotto. We end up getting the Charmeleon with decent HP. We are able to survive with only 3 HP left, and we're able to take him out with a few quick attacks. With our rival out of the way, it's time to go get the HM cut and go on to the Lieutenant Surge. After we cure the captain from a seasickness, we do get HM01, but we have no Pokemon that could actually learn cut at this point, so we have to go catch something. We end up catching a Spearow that we end up trading for Farfetch'd. Farfetch'd can learn cut and fly, so he's just a better choice. Time for Lieutenant Surge. We are level 45, and end up going for struggle strategies on this one. We're able to one-shot a Voltorb and Pikachu, as Raichu is actually able to survive a struggle. Although it does do a lot of damage, he then goes for a double team. Now that we have the possibility of missing, I start to worry just a little bit, but luckily we do end up hitting struggle, taking out Raichu, and getting the Thunder Badge from Lieutenant Surge. Next up is Rock Tunnel, and oh boy, I am not ready for that. After about going insane, we eventually do find our way out of Rock Tunnel. I couldn't be any happier with this. I know if I want to keep using these struggle strategies and actually stay alive, alive and not die from recoil damage, we need to get the item Leftovers. Leftovers is a held item that restores 1 16th of your HP, and it is a very good item and probably the best item in the game. In order to get Leftovers, we need the item finder, and to get the item finder, we need to catch 30 Pokemon. We'll just gradually catch Pokemon along the way as we keep doing this challenge. Next, we go to the Rocket Hideout where Giovanni is. For this battle, we're going with Struggle Strategy once again. We are level 50, so Struggle is doing a lot of damage as we're able to take out Onix in just a few attacks as well as Rhyme. Horn. Next up is Kangaskhan, who can do a lot of damage with Mega Punch, especially since it used Tail Whip. Now, because this AI is absolutely awful, Kangaskhan ends up going for Bite, and in this game, Bite's a special move. After using Leer a couple times, that was probably the stupidest thing Giovanni could have done. After defeating Giovanni, he drops the Sylph Scope. We'll need this to get past the Lost Tower, but before we gotta deal with that, we have to deal with our rival. Now we're level 58. Using the struggle strategy, we end up barely winning with only 6 HP left. Luckily, once we get Mr. Fuji out of the Lost Tower, we do get access to Leftovers. Ditto ends up pulling a Kamikaze on the Ghost Marowak, so that was fun. We then go get Mr. Fuji. He brings us back to his house and gives us the Poke Flu, and we go to get Leftovers. After defeating Snorlax or running away, go to the exact tile he was sleeping on and use the Item Finder. Once you use the Item Finder, you get the Leftovers, which is definitely going to be a crucial part in this entire run. Next, I decide to go take on Erica. Erica of course is the grass type gym leader, and with struggle, as long as we do not get paralyzed hacks or put to sleep 24-7, I'm pretty confident we could win this one. Actually, now that I think about it, we have Limber. Limber doesn't let us get paralyzed as long as we don't transform. We take out Victory Bell with a couple struggles, and Tangela goes the same way. Unfortunately, we do get hit with another Giga Drain, but with the help of Leftovers, we're not really taking much damage at all. Last out is Vileplume at level 29 who misses a Sleep Powder. Luckily for us, two struggles is enough to take it out. This huge level advantage is nice, but I know we can't keep this up forever. Next up is Sylphico in Saffron City. Unfortunately, level 60 still isn't enough. We do transform into his Pidgeot and do some good damage here. My solution to getting stuck is always grinding. That's why I have an insane level advantage. Once we get to level 100, I'm really not sure what to do. After an absurd amount of grinding and wasting all my rare candies I've saved up so far, I'm all the way at level 81 and I'm also using the struggle strategy for this battle. Struggle, of course, does have recoil, and it ends up adding up after taking out Charizard. We end up getting hit with a smoke screen, which reduces our accuracy, and end up taking him out with only 42 HP left. Luckily for us, Execute goes for Sleep Powder here, which gives us a chance to recover a few HP. We end up taking out Execute with Struggle, of course, and Alakazam has poor physical defense, so it goes for a Reflect, raising his defense. That makes our Struggle not do too much damage, but I know a couple more is enough to be able to take him out. Luckily for us, AI in this game is absolutely awful. Alakazam, after going for Reflect, goes for Future Sight, giving us another free turn in order to use Struggle. Future Sight can obviously do a lot of damage, but it takes a few turns to set in. I know we could go down to one Psychic, but stupidly, Alakazam goes for another Future Sight, and we're able to finish it off with one more struggle. That took about an entire day of grinding and attempts, but eventually, we finally beat him. I have no idea how we're gonna beat him for the champion battle. Next up is Giovanni. Every single time we got poisoned, I would have the reset, because I would lose every single time. After finally getting through the first two Pokemon without getting poisoned, we have to deal with Kangaskhan. Kangaskhan luckily goes down in only a few struggles as he misses a Mega Punch. Giovanni's last Pokemon is a level 37 Rhyhorn. Luckily for us, two struggles is enough to take out Rhyhorn as the second one is a crit and just like that we beat Giovanni.
Next up is Koga. Of course Koga is the poison type gym leader, and if we get hit with toxic, we definitely have the reset. Mutt goes for a minimize here, but luckily for us, we actually end up hitting our struggle taking it out. Next up is Coughing, which goes down and does a couple struggles, and last up is Weezing. Unfortunately for us, Weezing does go for toxic here, putting a time limit on when we need to finish this battle. I'm kind of scared that we're gonna get stalled out here by Koga using a whole bunch of healing items, so I really do start to worry. Toxic does more and more damage every single turn, and it's a lot worse than actual poison. I know I'll probably have the reset here, but we end up using struggle, and luckily enough, we actually get the critical hit, taking out Weezing, and just like that, we beat Koga. We then head to the Safari Zone and pick up the Golden Teeth for the Warden, and also get the HMO3 Surf. Now it's time for Sabrina. All of Sabrina's Pokemon have really weak physical defense. That means struggle is going to do a lot of damage, no matter what she sends out. We're able to one-shot her first two Pokemon, but Venomoth is able to tank a hit. Sabrina ends up using a lot of Hyper Potions here, but eventually she does run out, and we're able to take out Venomoth. Sabrina's last Pokemon is her Alakazam, which is also her strongest Pokemon. Luckily for us, Alakazam's physical defense is next to nothing, and we're able to one-shot it with Struggle. Now with Sabrina out of the way, next up is the Fire-type Gym Leader Blaine. In order to get in Blaine's gym, we need the Secret Key, which is located in the basement of the Pokemon Mansion. I really can't believe I'm saying this, but even at level 83, we cannot beat Blaine. He has a Growlithe, which has Intimidate, and he also has Arcanine, which has Intimidate. Both of those Intimidate users put together really does cut our attack, and it makes us do less damage. I really hate grinding at this level, but at this point, I really have no choice. I come back only a few levels later at level 88. At level 88, we do of course have slightly increased stats, and it's just enough in order to take out Growlithe and Ponyta with ease. Luckily for us, Rapidash misses his Fire Blast, and we're able to take it out with only two struggles. Next stat was Arcanine, who does a ton of damage with Fire Blast, but we get super lucky and get the critical hit with Struggle and take out Arcanine, beating Blaine, getting the Volcano Badge. Next up is Giovanni, the 8th and final gym leader. We end up doing a ton of damage with Struggle here to Rhyhorn as he does hit us with a scary face as we get a critical hit to finish him off. Nidoking goes down with only two struggles and next out is Nidoking. He also goes down the two struggles. Next out is Doug Trio, who actually outspeeds us and hits us with an earthquake doing a good amount of damage as his last Pokemon Rhyhorn comes out. Rhyhorn ends up sparing us going for scary face and we take out Rhyhorn with one more struggle and just like that we defeat Giovanni. Well we made it this far. We are level 89. I'm not really sure that 11 levels is going to be enough in order to beat the Elite Four, but we could definitely try. Next up is a rival battle again, and it's really apparent at this point at level 89, it's just not enough in order to win this battle, which is absolutely ridiculous. Even on our best attempts, we're just barely able to take out Alakazam, and every single time he would send out his Charizard or Gyarados, we would just get absolutely destroyed. It's time for the final grinding session. It took literally forever, and it took almost all my money, but eventually, with the struggle strategy, we end up grinding all the way up to level 100 and I would not do this without you guys' support. Thank you so much for getting me to where I am, and hopefully you guys stick around for more. Let's get back into the video. Now that we're at level 100, we literally cannot get any stronger. We're able to two-shot Pidgeot pretty easily, as well as Rhyhorn. Next up is Execute, who barely survives a struggle. One more is enough to take it out. Alakazam survives with only a sliver of HP as we take it out with another struggle, and next up is Gyarados. He sets up Rain Dance to boost his Hydro Pump as it does a good amount of damage, but next up is Charizard. And it looks like we're really not going to win this battle, but luck is on our side, and we end up taking out Charizard with a critical struggle, beating our rival just like that. Next up is the Elite Four and I have never thought I would get this far. We eventually find our way out of Victory Road, and we have to prepare for Lorelei. Lorelei's first Pokemon is a Dugong at level 52. It sets up Hail, but it's alright, as we do have Leftovers, and it just cancels it out. Next up is Cloyster, who goes for Protect and Spikes, giving us a few more turns to actually heal up. It does take a little bit, but eventually we do end up taking out Cloyster with Struggle. Next up is Slowbro. Slowbro ends up putting us to sleep, but for some stupid reason, Slowbro ends up using Yawn multiple times, giving us a chance to heal up. With a combination of luck and skill, we we end up taking out Lapras and Jinx. This battle took 103 attempts to do, and it definitely was not fun. This is only the first Elite Four member, and we're already struggling. <laughs> Get it? Struggling? Next up is the Elite Four member, Bruno. Bruno leads off with his level 51 Onyx, who we luckily crit right off the go. One more is enough to take him out. Next out is Hitmonchan at level 53, and luckily he misses his Rock Tomb, and we're able to take him out with another struggle. Hitmonlee is out next, and hits us with a super effective Brick Break, which does a lot of damage. He ends up going down, as luckily Machamp misses two of his Cross Chops in a row, giving giving us the ability to take him out. That took about 122 attempts. Bruno's last Pokemon is a level 54 Onix, who was really close to taking us out, but luckily we get the critical hit. Now that Bruno's out of the way, next up is Agatha. Agatha's Gengar always went down to a couple struggles due to its poor physical defense. The problem with this run was Golbat and Arbok. They were just absolutely too much for Ditto to handle, and over 200 attempts, I was not able
able to beat them. I honestly thought this was the end of the run, but we also have one item that might help us out. We have one PP restoring move, which is a max ether. I didn't bother picking up any more because I really didn't think I'd be needing it, but it looks like this is our only chance. Agatha's first Pokemon is a Gengar. Gengar's moveset is pretty good, although we're not able to use Toxic due to all of our Pokemon being poison. We do have some really good moves though. Confuse Ray, Double Team, and Shadow Punch is definitely going to help pull us through. After setting up all of our Double Teams, we end up taking out her Gengar with one Shadow Punch. I end up trying to confuse Golbat and make it hit itself to do some damage because I'm trying to save on Shadow Punch PP. Golbat hits its own Confuse Ray as I do hit myself and I just realize I'm causing more damage to myself than I'm causing the Golbat, so I go ahead and try to finish it off with some Shadow Punches. One Shadow Punch is enough to do a ton of damage as two more is enough to finish it out. Next out is Haunter who goes down to one Shadow Punch. Now that we're out of Shadow Punch PP, we have to run ourselves out of the rest of the moves we have so we could use Struggle. Luckily for us, as we use the last of our PP, Arbuck does hit itself in Confusion, doing a lot of damage to itself as we get access to Struggle. It ends up taking a while, but we do eventually end up beating Arbok with Struggle. Last out is Gengar at level 58, who somehow hits us with Hypnosis and then Shadow Ball. We do have five double team setups, so I'm really surprised that any of those hit. As we're about to finish off Gengar, we end up getting put to sleep with another Hypnosis. Now I'm really scared here as it keeps going for Shadow Ball, and a Shadow Ball could definitely do a ton of damage to us. Unfortunately, Gengar hits us with a Shadow Ball, doing a ton of damage and dropping our special defense. Luckily, Gengar misses its Shadow Ball, and we wake up this turn and finish it off with one more struggle. This was by far one of the hardest battles I've ever had to do. Agatha definitely was an issue, but now we have to deal with Lance, and I have no idea how we're going to deal with that. Now that we're stuck with the Transform PP, we really can't do much to get back to using Struggle, so we have to stick with this. Gyarados has Hyper Beam, which is an extremely good move, but of course we have to wait on the recharge time. We made Lance waste a full restore on Gyarados, and also finish it off with a few more bites. Now that Gyarados is out of the way, this was the entire hardest part of this entire flipping challenge. We have to take out Aerodactyl with one Hyper Beam. If we don't, we'll get hit with two Agent Powers, and it's just game over from there. After I got that critical hit, I literally just left, and I came back to it a couple hours later. And just because I got that lucky critical hit doesn't mean I'll actually win the battle. In order to take out this Dragonite with some actual HP left, I need to either get a Bite Crit or Hyper Beam Crit once again. We luckily get the Bite Critical Hit, which puts him in range to get taken out with a Hyper Beam. This battle by itself took forever to do. This is why it took about a month to finish this run. You needed so much luck in order just to get past this battle. What's hilarious is that we end up getting the Hyper Beam Critical Hit anyway. It didn't matter, but it was just super funny that that happened. We got Lance's Ace out of the way, but now we have to take care of a couple Dragonairs. The Dragonairs really wasn't that much of an issue. They'll both go down to one Hyper Beam. All we gotta do is hope we don't get paralyzed and get outraged to death. Dragonair goes for Outrage, doing an okay amount of damage, but we end up living with a comfortable amount of HP as we take out Dragonair with a Hyper Beam. Now since we did use Hyper Beam, we do have to survive two more Outrages from Dragonair. He does hit us as it does do an okay amount of damage, but once again, Leftover saved us. We survive with only two HP as we hit Dragonair with a Hyper Beam taking him out, finally beating Lance. Next up is the champion. Go ahead guys and let me know down below if you think we could do this. I don't really know if it's possible, but we're about to find out. Well, this is it, here we go. The champion leads off with Pidgeot, and we are stuck with Transform, and we really can't use Struggle for this one. Unfortunately for us, Pidgeot doesn't have access to Mirror Move and Sky Attack like he does in the original Red Slash Blue games. I end up using Whirlwind to try to fish out his strongest Pokemon. I don't think it's gonna really help, as Rhydon's able to easily tank any sort of attack we do. I think with Struggle we'll be okay though, but we're not at that point yet. After multiple attempts, Charizard's just way too strong. Fire Blast easily takes us out in only two hits. Even in an extremely lucky run, we're Charizard misses all of his Fire Blast, even if we take him out, Rhydon is still a huge threat. Charizard was a huge threat on his team. If we could take out Rhydon, I'm pretty sure we're able to struggle our way to victory. Although, we only have 31 HP, and the chances of Charizard missing all of his Fire Blast are slim to none. Eventually, we do get a fantastic run. We end up using all of our Feather Dance PP on Rhydon, making his moves basically do nothing. Unfortunately, the only PP we have left is Whirlwind, and we're forced to use Whirlwind. Once Rhydon is switched back in, he's going to be at full power and is going to easily be able to take us out with anything he has. Even if we somehow took out Rhydon, we would have to deal with the rest of his Pokemon, as the first thing we took out was Charizard, since Whirlwind was able to drag him out early. Unfortunately, there's just no way with these set of rules that you're able to win. It's just impossible. Even if you got a critical hit on every single move you did, it still would not be enough in order to win this battle. Unfortunately, guys, we have to say... 
this run was failed. Trust me guys, I've looked at it every single way possible, and there's just absolutely no way to win this without items. I know this challenge has failed guys, but I know you still want to see me beat this guy with items. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it for you guys, because I know if I just ended the video here, many of you would be upset. For this battle, we're gonna have to use X attacks. Of course we transform into Pidgeot, and then go with the X attacks. I think 2 is gonna be enough to take out Pidgeot, but unfortunately he survives with only a sliver of HP. We only have 5 PP for Aerial Ace, so I know we're gonna have to set up and waste all of our PP so we could have access access to struggle. Rhydon is a threat, but we end up using Feather Dance, making most of his attacks do almost nothing. We also take advantage of this opportunity and set up a few more X attacks. We have to be super careful when we set these up, because we could still very easily go down to a crit. It does take a little bit, but we eventually do take out Rhydon with Aerial Ace. Next up is Alakazam, and sets up a Reflect in a desperate attempt to survive one of our beefed up Aerial Aces, but goes down with only one. Now we're out of Aerial Aces. We have these Feather Dance and Sand Attack on Executor just to waste PP. Eventually, we're only left with five where Whirlwind PP. Whirlwind is an extremely dangerous move to use five times for no reason whatsoever due to the fact that it's a negative priority move and also Gyarados has Intimidate. Gyarados ends up dropping our attack a few stages as we do switch it out one more time. Now we're out of Whirlwind PP and we have access to Struggle. With all the X attacks we set up, Struggle is doing a massive amount of damage. Next out is his Gyarados who intimidates us once again. That's the third time now, but our attack is still good enough to do a lot of damage. Charizard is a huge threat with Fire Blast and we almost take ourselves out with recoil damage from Struggle. He keeps nailing us with the Fire Blast, and it feels like it's only a matter of time before he crits us and we end up losing anyway. We end up hitting Charizard with another Struggle, and it almost takes him out, but of course he gets hit with a full restore. We hit him with one more Struggle, and it does do just over half HP. One more struggle is enough to take him out, and I know he's not in full restore range, so I think we're safe. I know we'll be fine if we don't get hit with a critical fire blast. Slash doesn't do enough damage, and luckily it's not a crit either, and we end up taking out Charizard with a struggle, finally beating the champion. I know this was a failed run, guys, but we were stuck on the very last person. I didn't even think we'd get past the first member of the Elite Four. Make sure if you guys haven't already, drop a like below, because this video took about a month to do, and I really hope you guys did enjoy. Make sure if you guys want to see more content like this, go ahead and hit that like button below. I'll be trying to do one challenge a week from now on just for consistency for the channel. It's really unfortunate that we lost this run guys, but what's even more unfortunate, Professor Oak said we left with Bulbasaur, not Ditto. Can I get a hashtag respect for Ditto in the comments? But seriously guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, like I said, please hit that like button below. If you have any critiques or dislike the video for some reason, go ahead and leave a dislike and let me know how I could improve in the comments below. Make sure you guys check out my other challenge videos if you have not already, because I have done a lot more challenges besides this one. And with all that out of the way guys, like I said, I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out, guys. Thanks for watching.